Hello everyone, my name is Arnav, I'm 15 years old, and here I'll be showing you guys how using reinforcement learning, I trained an agent to play Atari Breakout. After training, it plays pretty well. It's able to get a final score of 93. Basically, reinforcement learning is a subset of machine learning where you train an agent by giving it positive or negative rewards. The agent over time figures out some patterns like, okay, if I do this, then I'll get a positive reward. And I shouldn't do this because otherwise I'll get a negative reward. Over time, it'll learn how to maximize its rewards. Now, if you're not too familiar with reinforcement learning, I suggest reading my article about my first project. It'll give you a good general understanding of what reinforcement learning is, how it works, and some key concepts. Okay, so now for the code itself. Here, as you can see, I'm using Google Colab. This is a great online Jupyter Notebook environment, which gives you a free GPU in the backend, which is really great. So we start off by installing some dependencies, then importing them. Then I like to mount my Google Drive. This is because sometimes Google Colab will time out. And if it stays idle for too long, then you'll lose all your progress. So I like to just save my model to my Google Drive. So even if it times out, I can always reload my model and resume training from there. Then here we're declaring some hyperparameters. I use DeepMind's paper as a general guide. So the hyperparameters are the same as they were in the paper. Something to note here, this, uh, the replay memory, in the paper, they say they have a replay memory length of a million, but that's really long and Google Colab doesn't give you that much RAM. So I found that the maximum amount of replay memory you can use is about 350,000. Then we have our pre-processing function. This basically takes in a frame, converts it to grayscale, and crops it to an 84 by 84 square. Then here we have our Huber loss function. And here's the neural network itself. So first of all, we're gonna declare two variables, Atari shape and action size. Atari shape is just the shape of the input frame, which is 84 by 84 by four. The four is because we stack four consecutive frames and then give those to the neural network. We do this because if you look at a static frame, so if you look at this image over here, you can't really tell, there, there's no directional information here. But if you instead give the network a stack of four frames, then all of a sudden the network can actually tell which direction the, mo the ball is moving. So that's why we give it four frames. So for the model, we have two input layers, the frames input and actions input. So this frames input takes in uh, the state over here. So we first take this and normalize it. And then we pass it through three convolutional layers. We first flatten the convolutional layer and then pass it through a dense layer made up of 512 nodes. By the way, all of these layers have a ReLU activation function. So after the dense layer, we finally get to the output layer. This output layer has four nodes, each corresponding to one of the, the actions. So basically, these nodes will contain the value of taking one those actions while being in the state that we passed it. Then we finally have our filtered output. So basically what this layer does is multiply the output layer by our actions input. So basically the point of this layer is so that when we're training our network and we give it um, a certain state and an action, it only changes the value of taking that specific action in that state and it doesn't mess up the values of the other actions. Then we also want to set up a uh, tensor board using ngrok. And then we have some helper functions. This train memory batch function is really important. This is the function that actually trains the neural network. We'll get back to this a little later. Okay, now for the training script itself. So as I said earlier, I use DeepMind's paper as a general guide. So I have the algorithm from the paper over here. We're going to start off by first of all, initializing our replay memory with capacity n. 
So basically, in this replay memory, we're going to be storing tuples of experience. These tuples are made up of the current state, the action that was taken, the reward that was received, and the next state. So this is where we initialize our memory. Then we're going to set up our model and our target model. That's done over here. This is some TensorBoard stuff. And then this is our target model. So the target model is used to create the targets for our network. So then we initialize our sequence, which is done over here. Before we do that, what we're going to do is take a random number between one and 30, no op steps is equal to 30, and just do nothing for those first couple steps. This basically helps the model generalize because that way its starting state will be different every time. Then we take the state and stack it four times. We're using an epsilon greedy strategy here. So epsilon decays from one to 0 0.1 over a million time steps. Then it stays at 0 0.1. With our get action function, we get an action based on our epsilon and give this action to the environment. We then process the observation that the environment gives us and stack it back into our history. Then we take this transition that just happened and store it into memory. Then what we're going to do over here is check if global step is more than observed step number. This basically makes sure that there's more than 50,000 transitions in the replay memory. If there are, then we're going to call this train memory batch function. So this is basically going to take a random mini batch of 32, then have the target model predict the value of taking the best action in the next state. And we're going to use this to create the targets for our model that we're actually training. So then as laid down in the algorithm over here, if the episode terminates at j plus one, so if next state is a terminal state, then we're going to set our target equal to negative one. We're doing this manually because in OpenAI's environment, they don't actually give you any negative rewards for dying. It, they just give you a reward of zero. So we wanna make sure that the agent knows that um, losing is bad. If it isn't a terminal state, we're going to take the reward, so the reward, plus the discount factor or gamma, multiplied by the value of the best action the agent can take in the next state. This value was predicted by the target model. So the target is going to be equal to the reward plus the gamma multiplied by the target model's prediction of the value of the best action the agent can take in the next state. Then using this target, we're just going to train our model. So after calling this train memory batch function, every 10,000 steps, we're going to update the weights of our target model and make them equal to the weights of our actual model. And that's it for the training process. Then we just update some variables and print out some important information. So here I have a model that's already been trained. This is a function I'm using here to actually record and display a video of what's actually happening in the environment because in Colab, it doesn't allow you to render environment like you would on your laptop. And then we can uh, run this test function to see how well our model is doing. Okay, as you can see here, the agent got a final score of 93. And that's it. So you can just let this file train for a while and eventually the model will get really good. If you have any questions or wanna reach out, feel free to send me an email. It's down in the description below. You can also follow me on Medium to keep up with my articles. That's it for today, see you guys later.